Hey, what's up everybody? So when I first started this project, I had a very clear idea of how I wanted to implement certain things. You know, uh, I had a very clear plan for how I wanted to do the spray editor. And then I had a pretty clear plan about how I wanted to do the room editor. And now I'm doing the note editor and I'm realizing I didn't plan this far ahead. So I actually have a pretty good idea how I'm gonna process and execute the nodes. The main unknown with all of this is how I'm gonna do the UI component of it. So, you know, the actual node part is kind of a mystery to me at the moment. Thinking about it, I can think of three ways this could work. Number one is build the nodes and navigation using HTML. The pros of this are I have the full power of HTML to make all the node controls like text boxes and such, and I can use the templating power of view to quickly create and distribute nodes in the graph and it should be pretty performant. The cons are I've never used CSS to do mouse zooming and panning, so coupled with the node dragging and connecting controls, I'm not even sure if it's possible. Option number two is to use some kind of library. The pros or all the visual node stuff would be handled for me, but the cons are it's likely to be bloated with stuff that I don't need, and the functionality is unlikely to work the way the program would need it to, meaning I'll probably have to write a lot of my own code anyways, and that would add even more bloat to an already bloated system. Finally, option number three is I write my own canvas node UI library. This is a horrible idea and is so much worse than number one, number two, that I'm gonna immediately throw that into the bin and then chuck that bin into the challenger deep. So my clear choice is obviously number one, if I can get it to work. So before I invest too much time into trying to integrate it into Ed, I wanna write a quick standalone test to see if the concept works. The main part I'm worried about is the navigation system. As long as that works, everything else will just be, well, should be basic HTML. I started by creating a simple testing area with two nodes that could be dragged around. The challenge came when adding the zooming and the panning, as suddenly all the offsets stopped working correctly, and I had to start doing yet another form of tricky coordinate transformations that are completely different than the ones I had to do in the art and level editors. In order to simplify the transformations, instead of doing it per node, I actually have them all wrapped in a parent navigation element, so that way when that parent element scales in and out and pans around, all the nodes follow suit. The tricky bit is the nodes still keep their actual screen pixel values as if they weren't zoomed in or out at all. So it became a challenge of converting the mouse's real screen position to a percentage of the navigation container, then converting that back into screen position, which happens to be the correct scaled position in navigation space. Confused? Yeah, me too. Good news is though, it works, which means thankfully this is the method I'll be able to use going forward. I thought the noodles were gonna be a challenge and thought maybe I could work something out with a transparent canvas or something overlaying the nodes, but nope, turns out SVG paths not only do the job perfectly, but also support mouse events, which I was completely unaware of till now. About halfway through, I took a mid-fall vacation and I'd work a little on Ed when taking breaks from the sun. I managed to put the finishing touches on the node editor during this trip and I got to add another fantastic check mark to the list. Besides the usual round of bug fixes I do at the end of a stretch, the last thing I wanted to do before moving on to the engine runtime was to replace the third party color picker I was using. I added it at the beginning of the project while I was on vacation, so it worked well as a quick solution, but it was super laggy and had some weird aliasing on certain screens. The new custom one is super smooth and responsive with the added benefit of having a bit more freedom to choose my own license down the road since the original color picker wasn't MIT. And that wraps up another video. The next step is to make the engine runtime and get that integrated with the editor itself, which should be a fun challenge all its own. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're looking for a way you can help contribute, sharing these videos around helps a lot. Uh, and as always, I will see you next time.